good morning, everybody. I'm pleased to chair this uh, roundtable about uh, researchers' career. So now we are uh, we will deal with a topic that is uh, transversal compared to um, your uh, research life. So we will not deal with the um, scientific uh, the disciplinary uh, specific topic related to AOPs. Rather, we open a wide uh, field that uh, um, the organizer uh, considered relevant uh, to be discussed uh, in order to share opinion, have advice. So I will just uh, give you a brief introduction about this aspect, then we will have the opportunity to have the opinion of uh, a group of uh, researchers starting from PhD up to uh, highly established researcher and then the discussion will be open uh, in order to share opinion with all of you. So if we consider generally speaking the career development process we can find a lot of uh, places uh, above all in many university offer services uh, in terms of counseling about uh, the development, the career development process, I added the researcher as a word because I think that uh, uh, the step that you can go through we cons when you consider the career development process can be um, extended also to the researcher career. And we can envisage uh, um, a certain number of steps. So the first one is uh, knowing ourselves. Uh, so uh, do self-assessment in order to uh, taking a kind of inventory uh, of our individual uh, personality, values, interests and skills in order to better know ourselves. Then the second step is uh, uh, the research step uh, in terms of career exploration, that means try to obtain insider's perspective about career field that uh, we are considering. Then uh, um, a step that it could be a um, difficult one because is the decision-making step uh, where we um, have to face uh, maybe some unknowns uh, and uh, maybe we can also be in a fear of making the wrong choice. Uh, this is uh, above all at the beginning of the career. Then there is the, the step when you, we take action, so we search, and this is the point when we are looking for potential internship, jobs, uh, um, sending out cover letters and resume, and try also to follow up with the employers whenever possible. And the last one is after acceptance, so uh, if uh, we are accepted, congratulations, and then the career start. So this generally speaking about the uh, uh, development process of a career, but um, giving more insights uh, and focusing on researcher career, we get, uh, uh, we have the possibility, you have the possibility to uh, obtain very useful information. If you go to your access platform, this is uh, a pan-European initiative. This platform has been developed uh, uh, by the uh, sustained by uh, European Union member states and partner uh, countries in order to sustain and uh, provide uh, information to researchers for their mobility as well as for their career development. So what I would like to show you and you have the references to the um, uh, web pages when you will find all this information, is what uh, your access uh, uh, delivered in terms of uh, research profiles descriptors. So I would like to focus your attention on these aspects because they uh, decided, they recently delivered, they recently published, I think one month ago, these researcher profiles uh, descriptors that are intended to classify somehow uh, the, the career steps, uh, but uh, describing uh, four broad profiles that can be applied to all kinds of researchers independently of the, um, the fact that they uh, are working in private sector, public sector, academic, non-academic. And I think this is very interesting because it's giving uh, a vision, a wide vision, 
uh, in terms of different steps in the research careers and the characteristic of the researchers. That can be useful because you are, most of you are at the beginning of their career and it's not obvious that all your research career will be take place in academic environment. So having the possibility to having broad profiles could be useful in terms of uh, um, facing what can be challenges, characteristics, and try to also locate yourself in terms of the descriptors that uh, European, this European platform identified. So the first step uh, is what they call the first stage researcher, uh, that is up to the point of uh, uh, receiving, uh, being awarded by the PhD, and if you see um, these uh, include uh, people that are doing their research under supervision and uh, mm, their profile is uh, being able to uh, carry out research still uh, supervised, uh, but having the ambition to develop knowledge uh, of research methodology, methodologies and discipline, demonstrating good understanding of field of study, demonstrating ability to produce data under supervision, be capable of critical analysis, evaluation, synthesis of new and complex ideas, be able to explain the outcome of research uh, to research colleagues, and in terms of desirable competencies, also develop a kind of integrated language, communication and um, environment skills, especially in an international context. So you can also locate yourself in this frame. And at this step, if you pay attention there is a, a big focus on what we can call hard skills that are strictly related to the field of in, uh, investigation, capability to perform research, uh, produce data, discuss data, even with a, a critical approach. Then the second one that they um, envisage is the, the step of the recognized researchers. And uh, in this case, we are dealing with PhD holders or uh, equivalent level of experience if a researcher that developed their uh, skill outside the, the PhD uh, career. So we add uh, several other competencies to the one belonging to the first stage researchers. So uh, you can read all of this. I will not uh, uh, read everything, but uh, uh, we start to introduce uh, um, capability to contribute originally to planning the, the research, extending the frontier of knowledge, um, starting to be co-author of papers, uh, uh, both at workshop and conferences, take ownership for and manage on career progressive progression, uh, set realistic and achievable career goals. So it is a, um, a level where there is uh, increased uh, proactive uh, activity in terms of participation to the research. And in terms of desirable competencies, they list uh, uh, among them, uh, I would like to uh, underline the capability to communicate with the wider community and with society generally or about their own air, uh, areas of uh, expertise. So um, pay attention to the fact that uh, your access, that means European Union, is introducing as more as you develop your career a lot of skills that are not strictly related to what we call hard skills that are uh, in our case chemistry, uh, informatics, mathematics, and, and physics, and so on. So not only these aspects, but several other. The step um, beyond is the one of the established researchers. In this case, is a person that has completely developed uh, a level of independence. And among the additional necessary competencies, uh, we see that uh, there is the established uh, reputation based on the research excellence in the research field, but also uh, making positive contribution to development of knowledge research, development through cooperation and collaborations, um, identifying appropriate research methodologies and approach, being able to conduct research independently, uh, which advances the research agenda. And among the desirable competencies, uh, there is the capability to 
establish collaborative relationships with the industry research development groups, communicate the research effectively, not only to the research community, but also to wider society. So they introduce specific commitment also in terms of communication. So they really envisage a, a profile that is going beyond the disciplinar field. And if we reach the, the highest uh, position that is leading researcher, we are talking, they are talking about uh, uh, a leading of a, a group leading in, a, uh, in his or her research area or field, including team, lib team leader in a research group, head of industry research and development laboratory. So we are at uh, the top of the pyramid. And uh, the list now is really long in terms of competencies. Uh, and uh, one of these is uh, making a substantial contribution, really breakthroughs to the research field or even spanning multiple areas. So it's very unique, let's say, profile. Uh, and among the desirable competencies, uh, beyond the capability and the well-established uh, international reputation on the proper the own research field is also being expert uh, uh, not only managing leading research projects but also being able and skilled in managing and developing others that is a very very relevant uh, uh, aspect for a, a leading research that is also acting as a professional development role model for others so we just had an overview about uh, what the European Union is proposing us in terms of uh, different steps we can go through in order to develop our career. And I would like, uh, uh, based on this, to open uh, um, uh, and the, the perspective in terms of trying to envisage uh, among the ingredients that can be used to, let's say, prepare a researcher how hard skill versus soft skills are playing, because uh, uh, these are uh, relevant aspects that we have to take into account. And uh, beside the hard skills, that is what uh, uh, you are supposed to uh, be already uh, getting skilled and uh, having already uh, um, relevant and well-established basis, there is also the development of soft skills that are complementing uh, in a, a rather relevant, uh, uh, with a relevant um, role, your uh, researcher profile. So uh, we can maybe look for what is the good recipe uh, in terms of balance uh, between hard skills and soft skills to have uh, the good profile to uh, face all challenges in order to go throughout the, uh, the different uh, and um, progressive career steps. So based on this short introduction, I would like to start the discussion about these aspects. So we have a panel of uh, six uh, uh, researchers that uh, you can uh, hear see very short summary uh, in order to locate them and they had the, the opportunity uh, as all of you to envisage more or less where you are, uh, not in terms of position because most of you are do doing their PhD, so in terms of different steps uh, most of you are in the first one, but in terms of uh, characteristic and profile, what you have, what you like, what not, uh, and what you feel is important, uh, you can also start to think about this. And I would like, uh, in order to start uh, uh, the discussion, then afterward to open it to you, I will ask uh, to all of them th the same question, so you can we can have uh, a perspective. That is, uh, what is the skill that uh, uh, you think was the most important, among the most important, the, the most relevant, uh, uh, to attain the, the, your actual level in terms of uh, research position, at, at the same time, what you think uh, was for you the, the biggest challenge. So, um, 
I think you, you will have five minutes because we would like then to open the discussion and give uh, the opportunity. <laughs> if you have a shorter answer, <laughs> it's not a problem, but the aim is trying to involve as more as possible all the audience because uh, uh, some things m at the first see sides can maybe sound obvious, but uh, um, if you think uh, carefully, it's not so obvious uh, what really can play uh, a role uh, in, in, in terms of developing uh, your research. Uh, okay, so we start, um, we, we go in this order, if, if it's okay for you, ladies first in this case. <laughs> uh, so the, the, the first uh, person that will answer this question is uh, Eva uh, Bo. Uh, she's a PhD in textile engineering and part-time professor and researcher at the Universidad Politecnica de Valencia. So please give us your opinion on... Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, first of all, um, thank you uh, of the organization uh, because I have here. And then, uh, okay, I start um, because my big challenge, I think that is when I, start, uh, I began as a researcher, because I, um, I got a scholarship uh, to work in, um, in a textile research group and um, while I'm studying, okay? Then it uh, was uh, my first time experience uh, in this type of, of work. Uh, then in this uh, scholarship, uh, I help my professors because I, I start, uh, started studying a textile engineering degree and after that I studied more things. But um, this was because um, I, I have the opportunity of combining the studies and uh, working with, with my colleagues in in the textile uh, group research, uh, research uh, group. Sorry, because my English is... <laughs> no. Uh, okay, then, um, my big challenge uh, was this, because I, I could begin my career as a researcher, and um, I consider myself a very lucky person, because after one project, uh, have always uh, had another project. Uh, then I I could continue my career. Uh, yes, uh, doing different uh, experiments, different development, different projects. And um, what else? Uh, I think that is very very important uh, because. Uh, I could uh, growing uh, like a, a researcher. Um, I I think that um, I I could get uh, a lot of papers, patents because in our uh, textile research uh, group we, we work uh, with companies, different companies. Then I think that one skill that is very important, I think is uh, to, um, to know what is the, the society needs, okay? And the industry's needs. Because uh, we have to solve the problems, but uh, we have to, to know what is the problem, okay? Uh, I think that another skill that for me is very important is um, because uh, we have to, to work uh, with multidiscipline, multidisciplinary <laughs> group of people uh, with different knowledges. And I think that uh, you have to communicate uh, your knowledge uh, to people that uh, don't know what, uh, what are you saying. Then uh, this is one skill that I think that is very important. Um, but one skill that I think that, uh, okay, uh, I, I commented before that I, I have always had one project uh, followed by another, 
okay? But it's true that on some occasions, uh, I, I, have, uh, I, hadn't, uh, I, I don't have any, any salary, uh, some months, okay? <laughs> and then uh, the skill, I think that uh, you have to administrate your money <laughs> and you have to, to be a, a big saver. Uh, in my case, I have my husband that uh, is true that uh, supported me because uh, I like my work. And then it's, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and um, more things. Oh, I, I, think he, I think you, you answer uh, absolutely well. Thank you. So now we, we move to Alice Pavanello. To, she's starting a, her PhD. Uh, she's um, in a peculiar, let's say, situation because she's a PhD student, uh, but it belongs to um, an ETN action. So she's a PhD student in a, as a Marie Curie fellow, and she's working at the Universitat Politecnica de Valencia. So we can hear also yeah. what was your skill and the big challenge. Thanks, uh, Alessandra. Uh, as she said, I'm, I'm at the beginning of my PhD, so I'm not an expert, of <laughs> a scientific expert. But um, my skill, the skill that for me is important out of the scientific part is the ability, the capability of adapt in the different uh, environment and situation. In the sense, um, I explain a bit. Um, in my project, we have the opportunity to, to travel a lot and work in different laboratories and companies. And this is a good opportunity because I can see a lot of um, situation. But at the same time, it's different every time to, to change, uh, to move. And also, every lab has its own way to work, or it's what I've I seen this year. So every time change uh, and uh, it's difficult and also it's for me it's important to to adapt every time and okay I can adapt every time thanks to the person that are in the lab of course or thanks to the colleague but it's a big work also for me so for me um, this was also the obstacle and the, the most the challenge at the beginning of my PhD. Also, sometimes the language is not so easy, in the sense uh, not everybody speaks in the same language, and not everybody <laughs> speaks in English. So, um, so for me, these are the two, the two important skills. And uh, of course, as Eva said, the communication is very important because, um, okay, everyone has, has its own um, project, but we are all together in the lab, so. It's important to communicate uh, all together, to, to talk, uh, to uh, ask for suggestion, and that's all, and also with the supervisor. So these, for me, are the three, I think, okay. um, important skill. Thank you. But I'm not an expert, so... No, but this is good. <laughs> this is good because we wanted exactly to, to compare and to share opinion among different uh, levels uh, in order to have getting different perspectives. So thank you, Alice. And now we, we listen to Marco Minella. Marco Minella is Assistant Professor of Analytical Chemistry at the Università degli Studi di Torino and he is also a PhD in Chemical Science at uh, the same university and he also worked for um, several years in a private company, so we will have a, uh, an additional perspective in this, under this point of view. So please, Marco. Thank you, Alessandra, because uh, you involved me in this uh, round table. <laughs> you. Okay, uh, I select uh, some skills that I think uh, is very, re really important for our, uh, for our work. And uh, I start from the part of the research. I think that the first uh, word uh, that I decide to say it is curiosity in the sense that uh, our, war, our type of word uh, must be driven by our curiosity. Uh, I think that uh, the problem is not uh, all, all, only to have curiosity, but also to manage uh, 
in a right way our curiosity, our fantasy, because uh, the science is not only fantasy and curiosity, but it's also a rigorous approach, because uh, the, the, the science has a rule, and uh, we have to manage uh, our work not only spanning from a, from a topic to another topic because our fantasy now today I would like to say something more on anything and tomorrow on another thing and so I think that this is important but this is important also the rigorous approach to the scientific part and to also your uh, your uh, approach to the problem. Uh, the other uh, skill uh, that I would like to underline this is exactly what uh, Alice said uh, before me, because it is uh, the, adapt the adaptability, the, the flexibility. Uh, I think as a scientist, as uh, people that work in the science, we are very lucky because it is a part of our mind, the adaptability. Um, and uh, to, to, to underline this thing, uh, I remember some years ago a guy, uh, a not so clever guy, I think, uh, he said to me, but uh, why Marco did you, did you attend a PhD? At the end of the PhD you are so specialized that uh, a company can't want you because, uh, or if you find uh, a company that work exactly in what uh, you studied, or if not, uh, you can do other thing and not your PhD. I think that is a stupid assertion. But for a, for a simple reason, because uh, to be specialized in a topic in a science, it must not, it, it can't say, it can't uh, mean that, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you, are, you create some bar mental barriers. It means that you specialized, but uh, you, because you see a topic from uh, this side, from this side, from another side, or uh, calling or, uh, and, or speaking with another colleagues from another part of the world, and so you 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 manage so many things that uh, it is true on the topic of your PhD you know everything at the end of your PhD because you know the literature you studied a lot and so on but this uh, does not mean that uh, you have a mental barrier uh, the most challenge uh, the, the most challenge things I, uh, I tried from my experience in a company at the end of my PhD I moved uh, after a couple of months to a company uh, that uh, gave me the opportunity to do a, a project regarding, in, the, in that case, the, the development of uh, photographic pigments uh, in strong collaboration with the Academy, with my previous work, group of work, always in Torino. And um, the, main, the most important challenge was uh, to find the right balance between the need of the Academia and the need of the company. Uh, I think that uh, for our generation uh, of uh, students and for researchers, it is not so difficult because uh, uh, from the beginning of our study, the idea that uh, we can move to do science and to do I don't know, research in technology, I think not only in the academia, but uh, also and especially in the company is something that is inside us. Uh, but find the right balance between the need of the academia that has got uh, different aims, uh, different uh, uh, ends, and the need of the company that is uh, create money, uh, it is uh, not always to, f to find. I think that it is not so difficult. Uh, the problem is solves also often the problem is the communication, and uh, often uh, the best thing it is clarify everything at the beginning and not uh, wait uh, the problems. It is better to clarify immediately what is the aim of the academia, what is the aim of the company, and uh, the way to work very, very well with uh, a nice result. I think that there's uh, a lot of opportunities in this thing, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this way. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Marco. So now we ask the same question to Jorge Rodriguez Sueca. He's assistant professor in the Universidad Politecnica de Madrid since uh, two years, and after his uh, PhD, he performed several postdocs in uh, several university and countries. So we have uh, we will have the perspective of a person that moved uh, to different places. And so please, uh, Jorge. Well, thank you, uh, Alessandra, for the introduction, and thank you, the organization of the summer school, for the invitation to this roundtable. Well, some of the things that my colleagues have talked, uh, I agree with, totally agree with, with, with them, so I prefer to talk about the, the main obstacle that I uh, find in, in, my, in my research career, uh, because I think it's a situation normally in all the countries, not only in Spain, is the stability 
of their the the jobs in, in in the research career. In my case, I finished the PhD uh, six years ago in the University of Zaragoza. Uh, Spain it was suffering an uh, economical crisis, so the universities reduced the positions and the, the grants for uh, research. So it was very hard to 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 find my first postdoc. Uh, well, in this case, I, I tried to go to a company to 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 get a job, but, but the companies uh, had the, the same the same situation that universities with economical crisis. The, 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 the job vacancies was reduced a lot. So after eight months searching a, a, a postdoc, contact with a lot of professors, a lot of researchers of different countries, some of them present here, uh, finally I get a, a position in, in Portugal, in the University of Trasos Montes. It was a, a very good decision with uh, a lot of, uh, well, a, a successful results, uh, well, I, con I well, other of the problems uh, was in this instability of the jobs is uh, the temporary jobs because uh, although I was very happy in in Portugal, the job was temporary. After the the contract, I have to to search another <laughs> position, so it's it's difficult to 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 get the, the stability. Well, finally, after the second postdoc in in Madrid. Uh, I get a, a position as, as assistant professor, uh, but of course, all of the, the instability is a, a clear disadvantage, but has a, a clear advantage, is the possibility to work with different people, with different research group, to work in different atmospheres, so I encourage you to, 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 to move to other universities, your other research center, uh, to do a a very good research uh, net, sorry, uh, contact network, and to um, to take advantage to, to to be in the conference, to be in the in the congress, in the summer school, to 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 know all the all the all the researchers present here. And, well, more or less, this is the the best, the most important obstacle in in my, in my career, and I think it's the the, the same for all of. All know, but almost all of the <laughs> we are here trying to, to develop our, our career. Uh, because about the skills, in my case, I don't like to, to describe myself, but I think it's important to, to have the idea the which is your objective. In my case, when I, I, I repaired that this, it was impossible to, to get a position in a company, I think I have to, to what do you say, a postcard? To, to, no, change your mind. To bet for your academic career. Okay. Uh, so, well, um, to be constant, to be a hard worker, and, well, participate in, in multidisciplinary works, as Eva said. Uh, and, well, more or less, this is my opinion. Okay. Time for Isa. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now we give the microphone to Dr. Isabel Oyer. She's PhD at the University of Almeria, and now she has uh, 15 years of experience in the field of industrial and urban wastewater treatment and reuse. She's the head of the solar treatment of a water unit uh, at the CMAT, Plataforma Solar de Almeria. So we can have also the point of view of a person that is involved in research, but not, is not academia, is not private company, so is a, but it's a technological place, and in, I would not say industry, no, but no, no. Uh, it's uh, in middle, also, yeah. an inter I think, an interesting uh, point of view also in terms of working place. So please, Isabel. Thank you very much, Alessandra. I'm not going to speak about the stability, because I think it's, uh, I fully agree with him. But it, uh, after 15 years, I, it, I prefer not to speak about that. Um, but um, but keep, 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 keep going, because things come, finally. So uh, from my point of view, uh, the... Yeah. <laughs> if, if you like it, never. Yeah. Because normally we, we have passion on this. So. And, okay, from my point of view, for me it's a challenge, most of the some of the skills that my colleagues have said. Because for me it's a challenge to focus on what is uh, important when you are, when you are in, in 
following some experimentation or when you want to work in something, you normally, if you think uh, in the basis or in you think in what you want to do in your passion, you, you have also tried to focus on what is uh, the necessity of society, not only what is innovative, but what is innovative and what is going to be applied. Maybe this is always in our mind when we finish a chemi uh, an engineering career or an engineering uh, st studies in the university. Normally we have that on, in our mind, but when we change to the research and experimentation, if we, normally if we go to the academia, not maybe in industry, uh, we normally focus or forget about focusing or, or the objective and the important thing for society. And that's quite difficult sometimes, depending also on your supervisors. From my point of view, in the case of the skills, you were speaking about hard skills and soft skills. Uh, for me, uh, hard skills are not so important, let's say, in a definite level. I mean, if you have some of those soft skills, you can improve your hard skills. From my point of view, if you, no are collabor you, do, you don't collaborate uh, and you are not able, I don't know if I'm, I'm like that or not, but <laughs> if you are not able to, to listen to your supervisor, to accept and to understand that they are trying to, uh, they are not telling you the things you are doing wrong, but they are telling you how to improve and how to learn, maybe then you can improve also yourself. So for me, that's the important thing. And I think it's enough. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. And now we go to uh, Lucas Santos Juanes. He is assistant professor at the Universidad Politecnica de Valencia after a postdoc grant in the CSOL Universidad de Almería. And uh, he's part time professor, was part time professor before being assistant also at this University of Alcoy. So please, Lucas. Thanks, Alexandra. Uh, first of all, I, I want to to talk about that uh, the researcher's career is a, is a long distance uh, run and uh, <laughs> there are a lot of obstacles. But uh, I think one of the most important uh, skills for the, for the students is to have initiative because they are not only uh, laboratory techni technicians, they have to participate in planning the, the experiments, in the discussion, and uh, be part of the of the of the group, a part, an active part of the group, and uh, not to need the constant supervision of, of the senior researchers. And uh, the best thing to to feel comfortable with this situation is uh, to have a, a background uh, in the field where you are are working, and uh, it's it's quite sim simple because you only have to to read some papers, some important papers that uh, must be were written uh, 30 years ago. And you don't have to, uh, to do the same mistakes that somebody had uh, in, in these times. And when you have this background, you, you feel more comfortable. You, you are able to take some decisions, to propose new, new things to, our, to the, your supervisors. And, uh, Probably the, the most difficult is to obtain a, a, a position, an a stable position. Uh, and in the university, also because you have to apport some uh, skills in the, in, as a teacher, as a professor. Uh, and uh, normally you have uh, a curriculum that uh, quite, quite good in, in research, but uh, sometimes uh, your, your uh, weakness is in the, in, in the part of teaching, in the, to being a professor, and uh, for applying for a, for a better position, you need to, you need to, to demonstrate the, uh, the ability of working at university, because the ability of working as a researcher is uh, fully demonstrated with your work, with your papers, and for me this is the, the main challenge for, for researchers and uh, at this stage. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would like just to try to, to summarize with the, some tips or keywords before opening the, the discussion. We have uh, uh, rather enough time to, to, to share opinions and uh, among uh, all of you uh, PhD students, but also uh, involving uh, uh, 
uh, researchers that are mm, not PhD students anymore, but uh, uh, I think that we are all interested to have the opinion of all the, the attendants. Um, if uh, I understood well, one common uh, point is, um, okay, from one side, uh, the, the stress somehow of uh, getting uh, a position, uh, permanent position, and uh, I can tell you that this stress was stressing also our generation probably uh, at the beginning because uh, we didn't have a guarantee the position. Uh, I can mention when I applied for being a researcher, next uh, position uh, will open 10 years later on. So. Uh, Things uh, are going at the beginning, I think that uh, this is a common stress that we have. But uh, what was interesting me um, was that I noticed that all of you um, uh, underlined a lot of what we call soft skills. And uh, Isabel also underlined uh, some uh, bi-directional, I think, uh, and complementary between hard skills and soft skills. I, I can summarize and try to give an interpretation. Probably uh, it comes out that uh, it's like that soft skills are somehow uh, dr uh, driven, uh, I, I, driving, sorry, uh, hard skills. Like that soft skills uh, are, are tools able to let you improve your hard skills at the same time or profit more of the hard skills. And I think that this is a an interest aspect on how they can be complementary and not separated uh, aspects. Because all of you um, confirm that uh, having a very strong uh, basis of knowledge in art skills is uh, obvious, but uh, to improve these uh, soft skills are drivers. Was it yes. correct? Okay, so maybe based on this uh, consideration, we can open the discussion and see what uh, what do you think, or if you have advices or comments. Uh, uh, all of you, please. So I can take one microphone to. Yeah, don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't see Cesar, so it, uh, yeah, Cesar it would have here. been a good opportunity to ask him. But Betel is here. No, no, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, is it okay? Probably is it. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for uh, for your talks. So it's uh, it's more directed to to Marco because he has been he has worked in <laughs> in in a private company as you mentioned, and there is somehow some kind of a black legend. I think more in the Southern European countries about once you finish your PhD, uh, it's kind of difficult, it can get difficult to find a job. Uh, is, is this legend among the employers in companies real? Uh, why do you think it happens? And is there any way, advice you could give us how to overcome this or? So, yeah, because as you mentioned, it says that you are specialist in a, in a topic and it looks like you are too special, your specialty or your knowledge on that is too high so to be employed by, by a company. Okay, uh, I would like to say that uh, this is a legend, but it's not a legend, unluckily. Um, I think that the, 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 also in this, uh, in this world that the things are changing. Uh, I was very lucky because uh, uh, our relationship between this company was uh, related to a project that, that was before my uh, assumption in the company and so uh, it was a sort of uh, consecution of uh, previous work carried out my bosses uh, but uh, i think that it's really true that uh, that the phd the, 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 to have a phd in some case in some companies uh, it's not uh, a netting value but uh, it is also true that, uh, uh, but uh, the, 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 this is uh, more or less the result that uh, often the bosses, uh, the head of these companies are, uh, they, they, they didn't know, it. they don't know exactly what is the PhD. It's, uh, it's strange to say, but uh, in some cases you go to, for a, for a, for a colloquium and, uh, okay, I have a PhD, I am attending my PhD at the university and they say, okay, but what is the PhD? 
Uh, this this thing is changing because uh, the the most uh, technological, the most advanced company now understood that uh, have the PhD and uh, to be able to to work uh, to have worked for a period uh, in a company is an, an impressive adding value, and uh, this is important because in this way the PhD is entering uh, more and more in the world. Of, of the enterprises and the future bosses, the future head of the companies will have the, will understood perfectly what is the adding value. Up to now, we are in, a, I think, in a middle space. Uh, I have to say a, a, a bad thing that uh, for a male, this is a problem, but not so important. Unluckily, and I say because, uh, as an example, my wife has got a PhD, and uh, after. Uh, the PhD, you are, you are um, 27, 28. For a male, it's not a problem. For a female, unluckily. And this is, I say, because uh, I live on my, not on my skin, my skin of, of my, my wife, it's a problem. Because I lost time uh, in this way. I think that also this is changing, luckily, uh, because uh, the adding value of uh, a balanced, uh, a gender balance in the company is now a very important and the, the people now understand that this is important. So I, I haven't got uh, a, a something to say. I say that uh, in the most innovative uh, company, uh, there isn't a problem. I have uh, the PhDs uh, in adding value and uh, I suggest uh, also to stress this thing on your curriculum. Uh, the most important thing it is understand, I think, at the end of the PhD, what is really, what you really want to do. Because if you decide to stay, as Jorge said, okay, uh, I decided to stay in academia and I decide that this is my future, this was my future, and this, this is my future, and I decide to perform this, uh, this thing. If you decide that uh, you love uh, and you want to stay in, uh, to move uh, from uh, from the academia to the to the enterprises, uh, is essential that you do the right choice. As an example, don't stay too much in the academia with a very short uh, per non permanent contract because this is not an adding value for your career in the enterprise. It is uh, often it is essential because at the end of the PhD it is essential to have a salary and so take a, a forced permanent a non permanent job in the academia is a, a possibility an opportunity but if you if you decide to move in the academia as soon as possible try to move and if you want to decide and if you decide this thing and you want to do this also if you want to continue your for me your education uh, choose the right i don't know through masters or something like this not through master random master but if you decide to work in academia in uh, in an enterprise devoted to uh, something try to the best masters where is in the europe where is in the world devoted to this one don't lose time to do jeopardize experience. You, you decide to move in the, in the, from the academia to another part, it's perfect. Uh, my experience of my colleagues uh, of PhD that moved in academia, from academia to the enterprises, uh, are very, very nice experience now. They are, their salary is higher than me, mine, uh, and uh, probably in the, the, there will be a life that is better than mine. But <laughs> I don't know. But uh, decide. He, at the end of the PhD, I think that it's the time uh, to stay on a chair for a moment and say what I want to do in my life. Uh, and uh, when you decide, uh, you have to decide the street and go to that street. Then. Uh, there's always time to change. I don't know. I don't want to say that uh, it's uh, a decision for for the life. Uh, in life, uh, everybody can change uh, always. Uh, uh, but at the time, I think Isabel say yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I would like to tell you that something that I think it's complementary and it's quite easy for me from my point of view. And I think you all agree: is don't be scared to go out from your comfort zone. I mean, sometimes we finish the PhD, we are quite comfortable where we are because we have been quite long time though we have been moving and it's quite scary, but don't be. From my point of view, I don't know if you agree. Yeah. If I can add a, a word to what uh, Isabel said, uh, 
don't be scared to go out from the comfort zone because this means that we can extend our learning area. So if we make this effort to maybe can be done step by step, so if we explore what is out from our comfort zone, we will get uh, the opportunity to learn. So this is uh, uh, a continuous learning, I think, that could, could be very good driver, whatever will be your experience, because we'll be help you in assess where you are and being open also to, to, to see what is around you in terms of opportunities also. Okay, there is Luigi. Six to Tamia? Who's the first? What? Both, <laughs> all together. <laughs> so, Six to first? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't want to extend so much. I will be a little bit provocative with some questions. Great. And also, I am <laughs> not agree with any some other questions. Is um, uh, first of all. Uh, uh, I only tell, have to tell you that I was not, I got not uh, a permanent position in the master during 14 years. So I got a permanent position when I was almost 40 years old. Okay. So the permanent position is uh, not uh, an objective. The objective is to have the possibility of working and not to be stopped. So I do not recommend you to find a permanent position when you are young people. Uh, this is not a good objective in general. Uh, the other, there are, I have two or three ideas uh, in the context. First of all, in general, in research, when you are making research, you are working in a project. If the project is competitive project, because the project are competitive projects, you have got this money because your society has decided to put money in this project, and you got this project in a competitive way. So this means research in this way always is because of the society has decided to do that. So we are not making research by our own. We are making research for the society. It's a general concept that we should understand, mainly the young people. They are working in projects that were uh, gained in a competition in key topics that your society has decided to finance. So the project itself is not your child is for the society. So this is something that we have to have in our mind, that we are not playing. Uh, we are not playing, we are uh, working. Hmm? So at the end, when you finish the PhD, what you have is a, is a product that is a high skill professional, uh, formed by the society. So I recommend you, when you enter with the private company, you cannot go telling that you are a PhD. You have to go telling what you are able to do. That is not the same. To be a PhD is not, uh, is not like to be, uh, uh, I mean, it's not, you cannot go, I am a PhD, I am better than you. This is not the way. What you have to demonstrate is really which, you, which are your skills. So it depends very much during your process of PhD, and this is the last provocative way, is as soon as possible that you forget that you are a student and you recognize that you are a professional that win money because of your research, and you are in a team of work, you are not in the university. You have to produce things, you have to learn, you have to, to be as more uh, professional as possible, better you are going to be a normal professional for the society, and not another student coming from the university with another title. This is the difference, mainly difference. So this is what I mean in this, uh, type of things. For me, I am not in the academia, in the university. I am research center, but it doesn't matter. I mean, what I recognize very often is, as soon as possible, a PhD is not a student. A PhD is a professional that is working with objectives, with times, with a salary, everything. So, as soon as possible, they forget that. As soon as possible, they will be useful later for the society and for companies, there is not an important difference between uh, PhD or not PhD, it's uh, um, abilities and skill. So for, I do not agree with, uh, you have to decide academia, no, I do not agree in this way. If you have a good professional, you are the way. In my personal experience, all the good 
PhD and the competitive PhD, finally they are working in a sophisticated work, not necessarily in the academia. In a sophisticated work because you are producing sophisticated professionals. So this is a more or less my general idea. Thank you, Sixto, for opening the, the discussion towards also the perspective of non-academia uh, and uh, giving another point of view. Maybe I think that we can also find an agreement on terminology because uh, I would propose, since you said forget to be students uh, that are just coming out, maybe we can agree on being learner all our way around. So taking... Uh, Mm -hmm. This is the official name. Okay. Contratado is something that is professional. Yeah. Predoctoral is that you have a doctorate. Contratado predoctoral is not the student work. Okay. But maybe we need to be uh, available to learning all our career. Maybe when you say student, uh, we think at the student as a person that is rather passive, that is sit and just receiving information, knowledge and so on. While maybe when you think about a professional or person that is uh, engaged in producing and being active and is paid for this, uh, maybe also the, the learning side uh, is related to being proactive, so a kind of bidirectional learning, not to just stay sit and attend courses. Do you agree about this? Reading, learning, improving, and again and again. This is okay. okay. This is uh, what in the, the Lean thing is a continuous improvement that we have never to forget. Okay, so please, Luigi. Yes, I, I was uh, lucky compared to Sixto and Isabel because I, I, I got the position after just after seven years. So, yeah, yes, uh, yeah. But I, when I, I would like to tell you what happened to me when I, when I started to work in the university. And actually, my former boss uh, told me, uh, unfortunately, you do not have any chance to work in the university. And uh, so at that time, uh, after uh, some years, that a, a, a guy that worked with me got the position as assistant professor, then I was keeping working to, because in the research, because I really like research, I really like to teach. And so the, the suggestion that I gave to the younger researcher is to, if you are passionate, if you like this work, is to work for, to, for objectives. So I already work in this way. I like this work. So my first objective was, okay, I would like to publish a paper. My subsequent objective was, okay, I would like to publish in water research. And then, okay, I would like to get the PhD degree. And so on, the postdoc position. I would like to get an European project. And so this was my objective. If you are passionate in your work, you, can, you, you don't need to be a genius, you, you, if you are passionate, if you have the background, and, and if you like to work, you should be constant in your work. As you can see, we, we organized this international PhD school that when I, I talk with the Sixth and the other colleagues about this, they look at me quite strangely, this, what is this? Does not exist something like this? Or, but finally, we, as you can see, it is, we are not paid for, no? to organize these events. And so this is on a voluntary basis, but as you can see, you have here professor that I, had, I, I knowledge it every day of the summer school because they commit themselves to come here because they like their work and they like to uh, help you, young researcher, to improve and to train you. So the suggestion that I can give you, for instance, I am associate professor at my university, but my next objective for, for sure is to get a position as full professor. And this does not mean that I will work in Salerno in the future, because I don't know if I have any chance. And so I will work around. And so I will, I already applied in other city to, for a full professor position. So the, the advice I can give you, if you like this work, and if you like investigation, 
is to work for objective, to be constant, and I think that finally you will be repaid for uh, your commitment. Thank you, Luigi. Uh, your uh, uh, comments gave me the opportunity also to add a small sentence. Uh, this aspect, two aspects. The, the first one, be patient. So follow your passion and enjoy. Try to do something that uh, makes you feel happy. Because even with the best uh, work you can get, uh, you always face uh, obstacles to overcome, challenges, uh, bad moments, uh, getting tired. So you need a, a very strong driver and passion is, I think, this driver that makes you feel that you want to be there even uh, if you face a lot of problems. And the other is also this... Um, step by step, that you say first, uh, I want to publish a paper, I want to get a PhD, I want to do. Uh, this reminds me um, a sentence that I, I wrote, they told me that is an African sentence, uh, is an African question that is, um, how can we eat an elephant? I say, oh. <laughs> and the answer is slide by slide. Slice by slide. So maybe at the beginning you see your career like to climb uh, 88,000 uh, meter mountain and oh, you don't breathe. But step by step. So having intermediate objective, but at the same time, I think that having also envisage the, the final direction. So if you, if you establish a direction, then uh, and learning by your error, by your mistakes. Uh, some of you said, uh, uh, you maybe say that uh, it's important uh, when you establish your background, reading uh, previous paper and uh, learning from the former mistakes. Learning from mistakes, uh, I think that is a very, very important aspect. We are scared of mistakes. We think that problem and mistakes are something that we have to be ashamed. But I think that these points uh, are opportunity. We can look from the other side the mistakes and error and take them as opportunity to learn more if i can give you this comment okay antonio please i wanted just to to ask the the people there the the young researchers there uh, just a very brief question and i would like the, to have an answer from all of you so what are you expecting from your career in maybe in the next uh, 3 years what you would <laughs> like to have in the in the next 3 years Isabel was still the position of a sixth, probably. <laughs> no? <laughs> it's a provocation that Isabel was still your position. <laughs> Women uh, run fast. <laughs> uh, well, uh, maybe uh, my first uh, goal is uh, maybe two or three months uh, that is the obtain a uh, European project as a, as a coordinator and we are uh, crossing our our fingers and uh, maybe in three years uh, I would like to be uh, uh, to have a permanent position because I'm 41 <laughs> now <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no, but well, to, to be married, maybe to have a child, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think it's not to, to not to ask to, to, too much. It's only to to have a, a profession, to to be happy, to to have your your work, and uh, and transmit to part of your of your happiness to if uh, by by working uh, in something that you like to the to the young people M maybe my students or maybe uh, the the phd students uh, because this has to be going on and on and uh, be part of meetings like this or or something something like that thank you um next three years yeah <laughs> next three years only okay <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's not easy. Uh, I'm not so okay. I'm also 41 already. Uh, maybe I'm not on the on the same. Yes, I'm. I'm. 
I think I'm lucky because I've been, maybe I'm, I'm going to be longer, sorry. Uh, but I'm happy because I'm, I started my PhD in 2003 in the PSA with Sixto. And we all, I think almost all of you know the PSA more or less. Uh, and we have a very good facilities. We have, well, until now. Uh, we have a, we, I had the opportunity to work with Sixto, with uh, Jose Antonio at the university. Uh, then with Anna here, with uh, Antonio. So uh, I, I think uh, I was... Uh, quite successful, or I was quite, uh, how to say, quite quick on obtaining things because I was in a very good environment and a very, very good and improved environment already. So it was easier for me, I think. Uh, so from my point of view now, in the next three years, I'm already in a, in a European, well, in some European projects. We are lucky because we have a lot of work. Uh, but so for me, it's not even the necessity to be uh, to have a permanent position. It's only the necessity to be happy on what I am going. I'm, I am doing. It's the necessity not to lose the passion, because sometimes it's a so long race that one can lose uh, this initial passion that you already you have now. So I only hope. I'm not. I don't know if I'm going to be the PSA in the next three years because we are in a somehow difficult situation there. But I would like to, to be someplace and I will be in, in where I could do a very good work and the same work as I'm doing and happy with that and also collaborating with the same people and more people and to go again to Colombia and go again to Chile and not stopping that. This is my passion and I would like to continue on that. That's all. Well, in my case, the, I got the position in, in the Universidad, Universidad Politecnica de Madrid in a, in a research group uh, without nobody working in AOPs. So I open in the research line. This is my closer objective now to, to equip my, my laboratory, to, to, to get post, uh, post -doc, uh, sorry, pre doctoral and postdoctoral positions, to people work with me. And of course, as Lucas said, Okay, the, the illusion is to, to get a, a, a European project or to get a, <laughs> any project. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is the, the, the one of the objectives because, uh, well, it, yes, it's difficult. Um, but I would like to, to, to reply Sixto about the, the, the comment that he, he did. Uh, Okay, it's not very important. It's not uh, necessary to get a permanent position after the, the to get the, the PhD. In my opinion, as I said uh, previously, for me the most important is to to visit different research group, uh, work with with different people, with different uh, atmosphere, cultures, etc. But when I talk about the stability, I talk about the temporary jobs. When I was in Portugal, the, the contract was uh, for one year and a half. And after this contract, it was impossible to, to, to get there. So when you go to a different university with people that you don't, you don't know, uh, it's normal to, to pass uh, two, three, four months after you uh, adapt and get the rhythm to, or to, you are constant in the, in the work. So, in this point that you uh, get the, 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 well, the, the rhythm, that you are adapted to the lab, your is finishing. So, mm -hmm. this is about me, the, the, the difficult, the stability of the contract. Maybe if you get a, a contract of five years, it's not an, a permanent contract, but you have the possibility to, to, to do a, a stable, or um, how do you say, a stable, uh, research, okay. For me, this is the problem of the, the instability. Okay. I'm not permanent. No, it's not a The only thing is that so often I I see young people asking for a permanent position. But but it is true. They are asking for a permanent position. You are telling me that's another matter. It's to have a stable situation for. Yes. No, 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 no. Stable. Yeah. No. 
I think they, they, they meant uh, stable, rather permanent, stable. Yeah. This is, is uh, from one side also a take home message for uh, leading of the group. So create the environment, establish an environment that the person that is coming, as soon as he comes, it takes a short time to adapt and being able to be productive and be introduced. So I, 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 I think that we have some take home message not only for the, the young attendant but for all of us. Okay, I perfectly agree with you, Jorge. The point is not the permanent position but the, 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 the table idea of your life uh, because uh, this uh, means uh, a lot of things about your life not because you are not all your work you are uh, mm -hmm. a lot of things uh, and in, in these uh, things are there there's also your work but uh, you have a family you want to create a family you want uh, kids and so on um, I uh, answer to, 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 to Antonio very briefly uh, from year to three years uh, okay uh, I was very lucky in my research career because uh, I was born in a very competitive group uh, that was uh, very established in the world of advanced citizen process and this helped me a lot but uh, now I think that from year to three years I, uh, I think that my 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 aim is uh, to to be more independent for probably not only because uh, on on the topic but also on my own topic of research and this is a, a challenge a, a, an important challenge for me and uh, both from the point of view of the research and uh, as you understood <laughs> I appreciate a lot also the collaboration with the company so try to implement our uh, way to to communicate to the to the stakeholders in our uh, in our region in our nation in our our continent uh, should be, I think, one of uh, my, 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 my aim uh, from year to the three years. And uh, I, I don't want to give you a suggestion because I'm uh, quite young and so I, 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 I don't want to say that is a suggestion, but uh, at the end of the PhD you have uh, also, I think, uh, do a, a, another uh, a, a think that evaluate critically the way in which uh, you work in the sense that uh, the science is not all, but uh, as an example, if you want to stay in a context, in an academia context, uh, you have also to evaluate the real possibility to do this in the context where you are, in the sense that uh, the position in the academia is not uh, always related only to your uh, scientific importance of your group, but also to the need of, as an example, the university, to have a professor, to have teachers in that uh, type of uh, topic. As an example, if you work in analytical chemistry and uh, in your university, uh, the analytical chemists are always uh, are all young and uh, the, the first retirement will be from a year to 20 years. Uh, uh, the, sign, the, the work that you carried out is fantastic, the group is fantastic, but uh, the, as an example in academia, the, you have to remember that uh, they need often teachers. And uh, if uh, you have uh, the course of analytical chemistry, I said because it's my, it's my topic, are totally full, there will be not a free position. And so it's not a problem, but you have to remember this thing to move and to find also the right place that is not always related only to your curriculum, but also to the environment. And this is a, a, also a critical evaluation. You have to do a critical evaluation about uh, what uh, is the quality of your group. Because at the end, you know what is uh, the, the way to evaluate uh, from a scientific point of view your group uh, and uh, the opportunity to, to increase uh, your curriculum and stay there. And uh, if uh, you say, OK, uh, I work very well, I'm happy, but uh, I can't find uh, a future year, move immediately. I, I, I know that is uh, very difficult because sometimes uh, you, you create links, uh, you create a lot of links. Uh, as uh, Isabel said, there's a, a comfortable zone. But if you, if you think to yourself, okay, this uh, uh, is not uh, the, the, the real place where can I Full of, can I follow my life, can I create my life, exchange and try to, as Luigi say, put 
uh, something uh, on uh, give you okay the end of my of my work now is this one and i find the best way to go in this direction it is not easy um for me, it's a difficult question. <laughs> Where will you be in, in, in three years? At the end of your PhD, probably. In the sense... In the sense <laughs> it's the easiest. <laughs> in the sense, I just started my second year of PhD, so of course I don't know what I, will, I want to do in the future, for now. Uh, in the short terms, of course, I'd like to have good results and publish as everyone, I think, and to do something important for the scientific uh, society. But considering the fu my future as a researcher, I don't know, in the sense, I, I'd like to, to finish my PhD, of course, and to arrive at the end, um, and to put, as Marco said before, to, to put in, I don't know, in a corner and start to think what I want to do in the future in the sense if I want to continue in the academic or try to find a, a work outside. And uh, so yeah, it's difficult. And I think in the, mid, in the meantime, um, to do this, to arrive at that point prepared, uh, it's important to, to create a lot of connection to meet people and to, uh, to listen to all the experiences of the others, like today. And for this reason, I thank the organization for this opportunity um, to understand what, what I have to expect from the future and so to be prepared for that moment in which I will think about the future. So, yeah, it's a, it's a big and difficult question for me, but uh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Eva. Okay, for me, very short stability and I want to be very proud of, of our work. Okay, great. Mm. Can I just make a conclusive uh, remark? Oh, Luigi has a short uh, comment. Uh, okay, there's a microphone. Just a short take home message. So uh, what I, I can say finally it is that uh, it is really important that you have clear, if not today, maybe tomorrow or next year, what is your objective in the life. Because I can assure you, assure you, I can guarantee you that a bad moment will arrive in your life, bad day will arrive for sure, and in that moment you will ask yourself why I made this decision. And in that moment you have to have the right answer. The answer is, yes, I make this decision because I like this work. This is, think, this, in my opinion, the most important message I can give you. Okay. Uh, also to the professors, also to you people who are established. And, uh, I, feel, I feel within myself some kind of pressure, I don't know, uh, in terms of publishing papers, maybe uh, maybe somebody who wants to take a career line in the academics, you, you are not yet there, but you just, you are on that duress and you want to publish, you want to publish because it serves like a parameter for, to measure how good you are, probably, when you are trying to apply for jobs or look for positions and places, and you don't have maximum number of uh, publications. Probably you are competing with somebody who had five publications, six publications, seven publications, as the number gets. <laughs> but you probably you have two, three, or you don't even have. And, but, that, but that doesn't mean maybe probably you are not good or you are not so good or you don't have, you don't know what you're doing. So did you actually, did you have this kind of pressure and, how did you overcome it? Because recently I think it's becoming like a parameter, no matter how the paper is, you just put it out there and then people read it or they go through it and they say, oh, he's, he has 100 publications, but maybe those papers are not really so informative. And how did you deal with these pressures during your time and during your days? 
<laughs> Again, only to remember something, a publication is a tool for demonstrating that you are making a consistent research. That's all. If you have more publication with more impact and so on, it demonstrates in research that you are doing a better and more consistent research because you have to demonstrate something Doing something, this is something like in a football match, you say that a team plays quite well, but always lost. <laughs> so to say that I am doing a good job should be demonstrated in some way. And publication is a, the tool for that. This is nothing, not, nothing more than this. If you have more publication, less publication, if you want to make a good PhD, you should do a lot of good publication and later to work in an industry. Because the, but the PhD was good because you demonstrate that it was good. It's a tool, only a tool. Okay. So I thank you all of you for participating uh, uh, and being so active in, the, uh, in this roundtable. And uh, I would just like to um, give a, a general comment. Uh, and maybe better than a comment, I would like to share an opinion about uh, our role. I think that all of us at different level, whatever you are just starting your PhD or some uh, of the present are well-established researcher, I think that we co can consider all of us uh, gifted somehow. And uh, I think that we have to be proud and very responsible for that. So we are pushed from the society, but uh, we have to be really convinced that uh, we have a very strong commitment from the society. And I wish you to be able to base also your future development, whatever in academy, company, uh, being entrepreneur or whatever, to have a strong ethic base and move in this direction. We need, as scientists, because we are speaking, talking about science, we are in an AOP school. We are facing a lot of problems that are going to or cope with the real needs from the society. And uh, we have uh, a strong commitment. So maybe in the past, uh, scientists were more isolated, were feeling less this commitment. Uh, they were, oh, we are making science, but uh, you, more than the less young people, are the bridge between the present and the future toward uh, a society that needs that scientific uh, be responsible and uh, let them, society, hear the voice of research, of results, of improvement. And uh, this is a very challenging aspect because it's much easier to stay in the lab, be in good research, fight for competitive project, publish very nice paper, and then stay at the point. Because uh, discussing with the politician, face, uh, and, and I'm from academia, and I think that from private sector or technological sector is even worse, but we have to do this step. So I wish you to being this bridge and give back to the society all that we can do and being proud of that and don't forget it. So this is my take home message and thanks to all of you.